Hello. Uh, before I begin this video, I would like to point out to the people who are listening uh, that I've never done anything like this before. I've never done a video proposal before. So I have no idea how this is going to turn out. It might be a total flop, but uh, anyway, I like to give this a shot. So here it goes. So this video is intended to be a proposal for Institute of Applied Creativity for Transformation. So in this video, I state some of the creative things I do, however limited it may be. Uh, I state some of the creative things I intend to do in the future and how creative collaboration is important to me as a person and as an educator. So before I begin dis discussing those three topics, I just want to do a quick introduction to who I am. My name is Sid. So don't even try pronouncing my last name, it's not worth it. Uh, so I share this name with two other famous characters, Sid the Science Kid and Sid the Sloth from Ice Age, right? I'm sure you guys have seen those, those two famous characters before. So these two characters are a product of creative imagination of human brain. And let's face it, they're more popular than this Sid right here. And you guys can see the reason why, right? I don't look anywhere close to what those those guys looks like and why else would I put a LinkedIn pages introduction to make you read through it right what a creative mind ah, but hey I got a better idea of introducing myself in a more simple way let's start with what I am so first and foremost I am an aerospace engineer uh, what I do most of the time I try to figure out how to be a good one and how I do it by never stop trying and as you do with anything nowadays, you know, when you have a question, you start Google, right? I mean, you Google the question. And it turns out when I Google how to figure out to be a good uh, aerospace engineer, uh, it looks like you don't need much. Only 3% talent and 97% not being distracted by the internet. The funny thing is I actually found this on the internet. So I don't know, right? So on my quest to become a good aerospace engineer, I thought about, you know, I, I first started looking to find people who are successful aerospace engineers uh, and turns out most of them were my teachers. So, and it made sense because they always seemed to know more than I did. It was crazy, right? So I figured in order to become a good aerospace engineer, I need to become a teacher first, but not in those, you know, khaki pants and, and ties and and blazers. So after graduating, I got a job with a fancy title as an assistant professor of aerospace engineering and I purchased this t-shirt too. So now what do I do as an assistant professor at the University of Dayton? Well, when I started this job last fall, I was teaching ME 225 Introduction to Flight. Um, this class is all about exposing students to different areas of aerospace engineering such as aerodynamics, propulsion, structures, flight dynamics, etc. so that uh, students can make an informed decision whether to pursue aerospace engineering as their career or not. So in this class, student and I got into in-depth technical conversations and discussions about why an airplane looks the way they do. And we discussed a whole range of airplanes starting from the right flyer uh, to the recent breakthroughs in airplane designs, such as the blended wing body that NASA has been working on and the DA double bubble design that uh, MIT is working on. So, you know, I was also fortunate enough to teach aerodynamics, which is the course I love. Uh, it's one of the favorite subjects, one of my favorite subjects in this whole world, um, mainly because the applications of aerodynamics are just endless. And if you're in this field for a long time, and if you look at some of the flows around an object, at some point, you stop seeing the signs and you learn to appreciate the art form the full flow field takes. Uh, and one such example is, is this beautiful pattern of flow field created by uh, in a vortex shedding behind a cylinder, right? It's miraculous. And I love teaching this class. So, but there's one big problem in teaching most of the aerospace courses, they're all predominantly dominated by equations. Equations, equations, equations. If we take any book, any aerospace book and turn the pages, it is full of equations, right? So the challenge is, how do you take a, what is essentially a math class 
and turn it in a way that makes sense to the students and gives them an idea of what the terms in each equation represent in real life. That's a challenge, right? So if I start writing the derivations on the board and ask the students to copy the, copy the derivation, then you know what happens? Then, right and there, begins the death of creativity, right? So all I figured out now, right now, is there has to be a better way to teach those classes. And I thought a lot about how to be a good teacher in, you know, in those classes. So upon reflection, I soon figured out that you can't be a teacher anymore in order to do this, right? You need to become a facilitator. You need to become an enabler. And you need to guide the students uh, so that whenever they have doubts, they can refer you. Uh, and, and I realized no matter what approach I take to teach these equations, ultimately the students are the one who's, who needs to make the connection between the mathematics and the real world. And I need to give them a platform. That's, that's my job. I need to give them a platform for them to do that or for them to make that connection. And I need to make them learn by themselves, right? So as Jim Rahn appropriately stated, formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. And I really do believe that. So, you know, before I go into some of the creative things I do in my class, I just wanted to quickly uh, spend a little bit of time on, on the assessment system that, that we are following right now. So if you think about the underlying rationale for any kind of formal instruction is the assumption that knowledge and skills and attitudes learned in classroom setting can be recalled accurately and can be used some other time in the future, right? That's, that's, that's the rationale behind you know, educating the students, right? But most often, teaching an assessment in academia is done as if the underlying rationale for education is just to improve, you know, improve performance of students in the school, right? And uh, the assessment system is another side of engineering curriculum which doesn't nurture creativity among students. So the most conventional method of assessment in any classroom are exams, right? Exams, exams, and exams. Students hate it. Right? And it doesn't really test creativity. Right? We need to ask ourselves this question. Do the exams that we follow in most of the engineering classes really require our students to be creative? Right? No, it does not. Right? It does not test creativity. So by nature, it's not required by our assessment technique for the students to be creative. So how can we expect our students to be creative and have no means to assess or evaluate the creativity. So on a basic level, it is clear that the exams are not the current method to evaluate students because each and every student is different. Their learning style is different. Uh, the way they grasp the subject matter is different. So as my favorite idol, Albert Einstein puts it, we judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree and live its whole life being, you know, believing that it's stupid. So, it's pretty clear that we need an assessment system which can evaluate and nurture students' creativity. Now, that's one of the main reasons why I started implementing portfolio-based learning in all the classes that I teach. So a portfolio is a combination or compilation of students' work, their progress, their understanding and knowledge of the subject, and they can include their reflections, their emotions, and their critiques in, in, in the subject that they learn. So in the aerodynamics class that I teach, the portfolio is a combination of homework, uh, mini projects, and passion projects, which I'll describe in a while. But I want to focus on the assessment system first. The way I assess the, these, this portfolio is by these following categories. First is clarity, attention to detail, uh, depth, uh, completeness, technical content, and I specifically ask them to do independent research as a part of the course, and they have to use visual uh, communication such as figures, graphs, tables to make their point. And also, the very important one, which is reflection, you know, either local, global, or frequency and depth of reflection, and overall impression of creativity and effort. Again, I give points for them to be creative in their work 
I want them to design their own portfolio. The portfolio can be a written portfolio, can be a video portfolio, can be a website or an online portfolio. And the amount of information, the way they include the information in the portfolio matters a lot. And I give them points, a lot of points for, for that. So by using these assessment methods, students are required by the course to be creative. And by implementing this assessment, I found it is better than the normal or conventional assessment technique. And if you give a number uh, after an exam or a homework, like 77 out of 100, I mean, how much feedback that that does give to the students, right? Doesn't give much, right? So I find this to be uh, a good way to assess the creativity. So now to the actual creative content of the course itself or the passion projects. So passion projects that I implemented in the class is the most important platform which students, which require the students to be creative, right? Students have to select a project out of these different projects, right? You have delta wing, biplane wing, golf driver drag reduction, angled winglets, you know, experimental and simulation on an airplane, frisbee aerodynamics, in a design of vortex generators, a uh, brand new concept called Prandtl D-Wing, uh, self-adaptive flaps, and it's a passion project, so they can pretty much do whatever they want within reason. So the idea is, out of all these topics, they have to define a problem first. They have to come up with a deliverable, what it is that they want to test, what it is that they want to change, what it is they want to measure. They have to define the problem and then do a literature review on these different applications. So, and you know, they have they themselves have to do independent study and figure out the knowledge behind the, these different applications. And they have to gather equipment and resources necessary to solve the problem and to basically do Vintel or computational simulations. Uh, so Vintel testing or computational simulations. So I find this to be a very great uh, creative tool for the students so that they can they can they can do anything they want so some of these projects like golf driver right it's an open-ended problem uh, how, the, the, basically the question or that you know most of the students what they came up with they want to reduce drag so how do you reduce drag on a golf driver it's an open-ended problem right and same with the frisbee aerodynamics how do you reduce drag on a frisbee so that you can make it fly better right and same with the wings so it's, there's there's a lot of open-endedness to these all problems, which which makes the students critically think about the actual subject rather than just you know memorizing and deriving equations in the class. So one of the future passion projects that I intend to put in uh, with the next week is this the sailboat. So recently the Oracle team of USA developed a developed a yacht which can literally fly above the water. I mean. Look at that, it's actually flying above the water, right? The aerodynamics are responsible for this are extremely interesting because if you look at the sail, it actually looks like a wing of an A320. Um, and it would make an excellent passion project for the students to get their hands dirty to figure out the aerodynamics behind how, how this boat is able to fly above water, right? That's an open ended problem. They are actually figuring out how this works. So it's, it's, these passion projects are a way to bring excitement and real life application into the classroom. And all in all the aerospaces classes I took at UD, I, this has never been done before. So again, if you think really about it, in essence, passion projects are intended to be, you know, to, to, to find creative solutions to real life problems, right? Like they do with my favorite movie of all time, Apollo 13. Right, it's where they literally have to figure out the way to fit a square peg in a round hole using the equipment available on the spacecraft. It just makes you wonder whether our current generation students can do the same, isn't it? Are we training them to do such, to, you know, to solve such problems? No, right? And, and I, I believe these passion projects are a start into that direction. Um, now, to talk about how, how can I add more creativity into my work? Well, there's still a lot of things that, that I can do to make students to be creative. So some of the examples that I thought was, you know, improving the communication skills of the students. So I can ask the students to explain the concept to peers, right? I mean, it's not as easy as it, as it looks uh, because 
they have to come up with creative ways to teach the concept so the others can understand, right? And we can also promote visual communication such as what I'm doing here and having the ability to visually communicate the ideas and, con and, and concepts gives greater confidence and motivation to the students. And we can also provide open-ended problems where students don't just solve back of the chapter homework problems where, but they're actually solving real life open-ended problems. Um, and we can also uh, promote independent study where students are required to do literature review, find resources and equipment to do, to do a project. Now, I started doing this very recently, so it's not fully complete yet. And there are a lot of elements that I wanna add in the future and I'm looking for more ideas too to bring in into the class that I'm teaching. Um, so I think if we start to do more of these, my belief is that it will allow students to start being creative. And I'm not saying that it will make them creative, but at least it will provide a path for them in the right direction. Um, so now to the answer to the third question, how does creative collaboration with others affect my work? So. You know, the field that I'm in right now is known to break a lot of barriers that humans once thought would be totally impossible. The field that I am in, each of every day, redefines what is possible. You, know, you see all these examples, right? Do you think one person was able to achieve all this incredible, you know, in, in, these are incredible applications, right? And it's, it's an in, these are each and every one of them is an engineering marvel. And no single person was able to achieve all this. It's a collaboration of the most creative minds that were able to achieve this significant feat like this, right? Even as I speak, there are aerospace engineers trying to do something that has never been done before. And I can, I can guarantee you that no one person is working alone. And I don't want to be working alone as well because I always want to be a part of a team. I always want to be a part of a team which makes history. And you know, I, as a researcher, you know, I have I have I have been involved in various research over the years. And you, know, you can see it some often in here. I don't want to discuss in detail uh, what what all these research you know is. So you know, I just want to. I just I I just love doing research in this field. And and the basic idea of all my research is, is, is all about making flying efficient and making the world a better place. And I can't do that alone, right? I need, I need creative solutions. I need ideas. And if you look at the, the different areas, different fields required to make airplane efficient, it's not just aerospace engineering, right? We need mechanical engineering. We need structural engineers, we need chemical engineers because airplane thermal fuel. We need electrical engineers, avionics, right? And airplanes are built by people and it carries people. So people opinions matter in airplane design and everything related to airplanes. So social sciences also play an important role in making airplanes efficient. So I am just a part of uh, you know of this whole different whole you know whole branch. So and I, and I can't I can achieve my goals alone. I need a team. I need ideas. I need ways to improve myself on my work. So that's how creative collaboration will help me in my work, both in teaching and in my research. So before I close my presentation, I would like to point out that the proposed method will address the following two student learning outcomes. So one is practical wisdom. So if the student should gain anything from the classes that I teach, should be having the practical wisdom to know when and where to apply the concepts to, you know, to, to the outside world. They need to be able to solve a problem when they look at it and not trying to remember what it is that they learned eight years ago, right? They should, they, they should know it, they should, they sh it's, they should be, they sh it should be in them. It sh they should be able to look at a problem and solve it. So, and also, the second part is to install a, a sense of vocation or personal vocation in the field of aerospace engineering. So, you know, installing a personal vocation is, is a main intention of teaching the classes, right, in teaching the curriculum. And I think the classes, on the method that I'm teaching might enhance their passion, show them their strength, 
and expose them to the world, which will give them the sense of vocation long after they graduated from the class. So with that, I would like to thank you for considering uh, to be a cohort in ICAT. And if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer. So thank you very, very much.